Hey, 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 how's everybody doing? It is Matt and it is Maniac Monday. Yes, folks, it is already the beginning of the week. First and foremost, I hope all of you guys had a fantastic weekend. Hopefully you got to get out and enjoy the weather wherever you're at. Hopefully the sun was shining. I know the sun was shining here, but it was still cold as balls out there. It was just, uh, it's just brutal. But anyways, uh, for oh, also, also, I do hope you... Each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk on top of that. Because life really is too short as is. Please do like, share, and subscribe. I love seeing each and every one of you every Monday through Friday. I see I'm up at that 390-something marker, like 394, I believe. Uh, let's see if we can get six more by the end of the year. That would be awesome if you guys would just like, share, and subscribe. Please, please, please. Uh, and then also check out the description box for more information on on the daily film, such as your brief synopsis, your starring cast, runtime of the cut I'm watching, your director, an MPAA rating if one exists, some trivia if there's anything worthwhile of mentioning, and then of course a link for either a trailer or a scene in a mo from the movie itself. It is very, very, very rare when I do not have one or the other for you. So definitely um, take a little bit of time and check out that stuff in the description box. It'll it'll help you get another uh a bigger bite of a bigger taste of what it is that uh, uh i'm t i'm jabbering on about for the day so so do definitely check that out uh i uh i highly recommend it yes 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 now that I got all of that out of the way, let's get on to the movie of the day. Today's is an absolute gem. It is one that I watch probably once a year, maybe twice, depending on, on my mood. Uh, it's one of my favorite modern zombie movies, or at least made within the last... 16 years 20 we'll just say 15 years it's been it's been 16 since this is came this since this came out but uh uh it, this release here came out in 2006 and i didn't see it till after 2006 <laughs> anyways uh this one is an absolute gem like i said it is it is uh, uh 16 years old and it is none other than bone sickness yes this is an absolute gem as i as i've been saying and and uh, this uh, uh uh quote right here splattertastic that is an absolute uh truth this is a splattertastic movie uh this is the uh, uh, uh special edition from unearthed films by the way uh, it is a standard issue pressed DVD, so you get to uh, you get a nice issue there, and then it is zero reversible artwork as is, uh, but it does have quite a few special features in here, including uh, director's commentary, uh, behind the scenes footage, outtakes, uh, a director or, or a uh, interview with director Brian Paulin himself. Uh, there's a feature at about them goofing around on set. There's a feature at where they. Uh, uh, it goes over a few times uh, during the movie where somebody like got hurt, like minor or or somewhat. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, they're all. I would say they're all injuries, but it uh, they're some of them are extremely just silly, you know, like a head bonking, you know, or 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 hitting your your hitting your head a little hard. That was one of the main ones that I saw that was uh, that would uh, constantly get my attention and make me chuckle a little bit. Now, as far as the uh, goofing around on set feature, now that is gold. There's there's a uh, um, a whole thing where they're playing football with one of the uh, decapitated heads from one from the movie, and as a matter of fact, the scene and in, in, there's a scene towards the end of Bone Sickness where a dog is is carrying around a severed head and and tears off a huge chunk of it. They actually they got that on tape and they added it to the movie as part of the the uh, um, uh, uh, extra added bonus footage, I believe, that they made for this. I don't know if that was in, in the original cut, uh, because this was being sold um, both on their website, mor morbidvision.com, and then, of course, the um, their store on eBay, uh, and that's under Morbid Vision as well. Uh, do check out their stuff. They got bone sickness. They got fetus. They got cryptic plasm. Uh, uh, they got, uh, what else? Am I, what am I forgetting besides cr 
cryptic plasm and fetus. Um, oh shoot, I just I've already done a review on it, I believe. Uh, either way, it's a good. There, all of his stuff is is extremely entertaining, and I recommend each and every one of them. Uh, there's not a dog in the bunch, as I like to say, with especially with uh, Brian Pollan's films. Now, like I said, this is directed by Brian Pullman, Pullen, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, starring, he's he's one of the actors in here. And then uh, uh, it, we got Rich George, who is also a producer, stuntman, actor, uh, uh, special effects guy. He is, he is the number, it's, it's Brian Pullen and Rich and Rich George are, are like, like, uh, uh, together uh, as far as they, the film duo, they, they make everything happen, which is awesome. Uh, and then, you know, you see Rich in, in several of the films. So you definitely, uh, he's a familiar face. So, so keep that in mind. And then we also got Daria uh, Zabinski. She is absolutely uh, beautiful in here. She is the uh, the wife to uh, uh, Rich uh, Rich George's character. Um, she is uh, uh, very concerned about about the health of her husband because he is extremely sick and extremely ill to the point to where he is bedridden. Um, uh, he she uh, is giving him a bath at one point, a sponge bath, and. Um, he she is uh, uh brushing his hair and chunks of the hair come out uh like he starts vomiting worms and pooping out worms <laughs> he shits worms it is it's so cringy you know like what well, and and like going through the commentary the director's commentary because it's both uh Brian Paul and, and Rich George doing the commentary they are absolute comedic gold uh it's one of my favorite commentaries i have ever listened to uh, as far as modern day stuff because uh my favorite is probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 that one is absolutely just so so good. It is one of my favorite commentary tracks. It probably is my favorite commentary track. But this would definitely, I would put it in in uh, top top ten for sure, top five maybe. It's gold on the commentary. Um, and then we got Kevin Barber. Um, he comes in here and he's done several, several stuff for them. I definitely recommend or recognize him from, from fetus. Uh, he was a, uh, uh, black arts, like, uh, uh, he ran a store that, that, uh, specialized in like witchcraft, voodoo, like satanic type spells and stuff like that. Uh, definitely, um, uh, uh. Uh, what I would say, a, a well-rounded actor. He is one that I have, I always am a, a fan of seeing Kevin on on screen when he is when he is available for the more mid vision stuff. And which, uh, by the way, I believe he well, where I don't remember where exactly in Massachusetts. I believe is where it is. Uh, he is a uh, or is or was a uh, morning DJ. So that's pretty cool. He definitely has that uh, DJ uh, voice going on. Definitely very charismatic. Uh, very, very fun actor. And then we've got Ernest Hutcherson in here. He plays... Uh, um, uh, uh, Kevin Barbera's uh, um, partner. Uh, they both play police detectives in this, in which uh, um, they both have interesting roles in here. Uh, I don't know if I... Ernest is one of those actors like I he's in other other Morbid Vision stuff. He He's a very um, dry performance um he's one of those like he's probably the weakest link out of all of them uh um even brian does a better job acting and he is really no actor himself he's an amazing special effects artist filmmaker uh i i absolutely like i i've been saying i recommend it every single movie he has ever made there is not a bad one in the bunch and then who else do we have in here? Oh, I already named. I already said Brian's in here. But uh, uh, basically, what is this about at this point? Um, 
Rich George, he he is extremely sick, as I was telling you. Like, chunks of hair are falling out of him. He's throwing up worms, uh, shitting worms, uh, things of that nature. And his friend, uh, uh, play, Thomas, played by Brian Paulin, is a... Uh, um, works in a morgue and he is helping uh uh daria Kristen is her name i i believe helps Kristen to um uh, uh make him help make uh, rich george's character healthy again and back to the the loving husband that she knows and remembers uh um and in turn, it uh, uh, upsets these goblins that are uh, uh, essentially the the dead that they are stealing these bones from, and and uh, uh, the mar- basically they're taking the marrow from that and they're injecting it into uh, or feeding it to him or, or something like it. They're having him ingest it, uh, uh, and he is. Um, it's it somewhat helps him for a while, and then they find out that the dead stuff isn't working as best. So they use fre- they At one point, they get a fresh cadaver, uh, which is a very fun scene. It, it uh, uh, involves a, ve- a, a, na- a very attractive naked girl laying on the on the basement floor. Uh, I'm sure she froze her ass off, but uh, um, it it's a very very uh, a fun scene because b- it basically involves Daria and and uh, uh, Brian Pollan's character he is getting ready to ba- basically um, uh, de- eviscerate her and get the bone marrow out of her for um, for rich George uh, which in turn has has um, some uh, negative uh, effects from Daria because uh, she knew the girl uh, uh, it was um, a fresh body and she did not want to be known as a killer or be associated with a killer, even though they're already associated with a, uh, a necro junkie as they called, uh, uh, in that movie in, in bone sickness. I just, it, it, that whole phrase just made me giggle, but I loved it. But so, so, um, they're spending the whole movie trying to, uh, uh, make him feel better. But then these goblins, like I was trying to get at earlier, um, they feed upon the dead and, and they are very upset that somebody has been, um, stealing body parts and, and, uh, uh, stealing their, messing with their food, essentially. Uh, they, they, uh, go on a little killing spree and, and they end up uh, um, uh, invoking the dead to take over the uh, situation and and it, it get some revenge on these on these guys. It's very done very very well. Um, this one runs. This cut runs at an hour and forty four minutes, and it, it was like a good ten minutes uh, longer from the original cut. From what I I believe they were saying in the commentary, it's uh, extra added gore. Uh, there's definitely um, um, uh, some clips that that uh, as they as I was watching it that they talked about that weren't in the original cut. Uh, there's even uh, uh, a part from a movie that they abandoned at one point that they were uh, an older older zombie movie that they planned on making, but things fell through on it. But they used one of the scenes the key, or they used a scene or the scene that they filmed uh, for it, uh, it during the. Uh, uh, the move they put it in here and it's uh, a fun little scene it involves a girl swimming and she gets attacked by a zombie underneath the water and he, he the zombie uh, uh eats out her intestines and stuff like that it's really cool there's lots of gut munching in here at one point you even get to see a uh, um a large intestine uh, colon ripping out of this guy's anus it is absolutely a a, a just a, a cringy cool scene because he is at like actually like it dragging the guy along as he's yanking on this large and colon and intestine it is just uh it's so cool the effects so so cool and i love what brian paulin does with his lighting schemes uh it is um it 
it is very, uh, it reminds me of old school Italian stuff. And, um, I really like that. They, they, these zombies remind me of, they even bring it up in the commentary that they are very Fulci-esque. And I agree, they are, they are there. And they remind me of Burial Ground a little bit, Knights of Terror, which is, those zombies were so cool looking in that. I don't care what anybody says, I love that movie. Uh, so these zombies were very, like, rotten and, and uh, uh, decomposed. So they had, uh, like, some of them have, like, spider webs all over them and and like they're just they're just gnarly looking they are very very cool looking zombies and and they're slow zombies they are not that that horse shit running zombies where they growl and and sound like like otherworldly creatures uh they they are are exactly true to form to what i myself and what most people would consider as a real zombie all right, now as far as any kind of ratings would go as on a technical side, uh, this thing's probably a 4 out of 5. Uh, um, Brian really pulls it together. This is my favorite film out of everything he does. And, I, and then Fetus is an extremely close second. That has got scenes and stuff in there where it's just like, mind-blowing, bro. Uh, my sisters and brothers, it is absolutely mind-blowing. But uh, uh, this one, um, he really does a great job with delivering the story. The acting is on point, uh, especially Daria. She is a very good character in this, and she is absolutely stunning to look at. There is a very, very uh, steamy, fun little little nude scene that she has in here that I just, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> but there's there's definitely enough enough TNA in here to uh, um, uh, uh, appease the uh, the the horror viewer that is looking for that end of it. Uh, it is definitely it pulls through for you there. Um, and then, like I said, the gore is just mind blowing. Uh, uh, what else is do we got? Uh, the editing seems. Uh, flawless almost it's almost seamless it uh the momentum never changes and, and gets wonky or stumbles over itself or it makes you feel like you're you're watching several different movies because the uh the art direction changes no it stays on point the entire movie and never gets dull now the only the only downfalls i really have is is uh uh the uh the uh, 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 assault rifle usage, it is it is one of those, like, it is obviously, quite obvious, it's, uh, the muzzle fire is, is added on in post-production, and it is a visual effect. Um, I understand that not every film can afford the budget of purchasing um, uh, uh, live shells, not live rounds, excuse me, but uh, 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 blanks for their film. So I can easily look over that. So that is not a, that is like my only real thing that I'm like, that doesn't look so good. But that's okay. The The rest of the movie works. So that's why it, it, I'm only giving it the 4 out of 5 on as far as a technical side. But now as far as an entertainment side, this is another 4 out of 5. It, it is it is almost perfect. Uh, like all the way down to the to the crap, the, the uh, crapping of, of the worms. And then I feel bad for the poor bastards because they had to put the, they, they didn't have to, but they they did for the for the love of film and getting it out there on to this for the love of cinema they put these worms in their mouths and and they talk in the commentary they talk about how the worms were um defecating in their mouths and then like at one point uh the worms had had uh, died and so they were excreting this like nasty slime and stuff like that and they just reeked of high heaven and and just stuff like that it is so cool i i love this movie guys definitely check it out to double this is two thumbs up all the way all right, guys, love your faces, and I'll see you tomorrow. Only going to be around uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week because uh, of the uh, holiday schedule. So uh, do tune in for both tomorrow and Wednesday. I'm not 100% what I got lined up for 
for for the two days. Uh, we'll see as I go along. I'll probably do another holiday horror, and then maybe uh, I got a Fulci one that I've been been itching to do for you guys. All right, y'all. Love your faces. Oh, 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 there it is.